So, it's looking like Brendan Rodgers is going to be the new manager of Liverpool. The appointment will cost Liverpool about £5 million in compensation money, which will go to Swansea. Brendan Rodgers is Northern Irish, he's 39 years old, he had to retire from football at just 20 due to injury. Under Jose Mourinho at Chelsea, he coached the youth and reserve teams. He then went into his first job in management at Watford. He then went to Reading where it didn't quite work out for him and he was appointed at Swansea who he took up via the playoffs to the Premier League to become the first ever Welsh team in the Premier League. Everyone pretty much agrees that Rodgers has done a great job at Swansea. He got them to finish 11th in the Premier League this season, which is a great result. No one was expecting anything from them. You know, Just to stay up would have been a good achievement. He also had Swansea playing an open, attacking style of football, which impressed a lot of people and showed that you can play an open game, much like Blackpool did the year before, who unfortunately did go down. The Liverpool owners made it very clear they had this long list of prospective people they wanted to, to interview and talk to about the job. Now, it's believed Wigan manager Roberto Martinez turned down the position because he didn't want to work with the director of football in the way that Liverpool were, were trying to get him to work. He wanted to have more control over the players, who he signed, etc. And I think Liverpool want to do a slightly different setup. What's a little bit concerning for Liverpool fans is if you look at the list of people Liverpool were talking about trying to get in as their manager, Roberto Martinez and uh, Brendan Rodgers, who are the two that have sort of stood out as the most likely to take the job, are actually at the bottom of the list when it comes to win ratios as manager. If we take a look at all the people who've been linked with the job, plus the recent managers of Liverpool, you'll see what I mean. These stats include all their games at all clubs they've managed. So Roberto Martinez, Wigan manager, who looks like he's not going to be getting the job, his win ratio is 38.34%. OK, so he wins just over a third of his games. Brendan Rodgers, who looks like he is going to get the job, his win ratio is just 41.06%. So he wins 41% of the games he manages. Next up is Roy Hodgson, who left the Liverpool job last year. Uh, he went and became the West Brom manager after, after being sacked from Liverpool, and he's now the England manager. His win percentage was 43.01, so it's just a little bit more than Brendan Rodgers, but he has played a hell of a lot more games. The other thing a bit more concerning about Brendan Rodgers is he's only managed 150 top flight games, OK? If you compare that to Kenny Dalglish, who's managed 665, or Roy Hodgson, who's managed an incredible 951 games. Next up is Rafa Benitez. He took Liverpool to two Champions League finals, winning one of them. He achieved a win ratio of 52%. Just ahead of him is Kenny Dalglish, who's just left the Liverpool job, who gets a 54% win ratio. Fabio Capello managed a whole host of teams across Europe, including England, manages to get 57% of his games to be victories. Louis van Gaal, who was talked about being brought in as a director of football, as a manager, he's achieved a 61.58 win percentage ratio. Andrew vs Boas, who's probably the closest to Brendan Rodgers in terms of experience, he's managed even less games, only 121 top flight games. AVB manages to get a 61.98 win percentage ratio, which is over 20% higher than Brendan Rodgers. Frank de Boer is the least experienced of all these managers. He's only managed about 70 games in top flight football. He's the manager of Ajax, but he's achieved an amazing 64.79%. And the most successful manager on the list in terms of win ratio is Pep Guardiola. Perhaps that's expected as he was, of course, manager of Barcelona, the best team potentially of all time. He achieved a win ratio of 72.65%. That's 72% of the games he played, he won. It's looking like Rodgers will sign a three-year contract and there'll be a few decisions he needs to make straight away. First off, he's got two players out on loan, Joe Cole and Aquilani. I guess he and the director of football and the guys upstairs are going to have to decide whether they want to keep those players. It's expected that Dirk Cow and Maxi Rodriguez are out. They're going to be leaving to get first team football somewhere else. The Liverpool job represents a completely different challenge to Swansea. At Swansea, Rodgers had no real expectations apart from stay in the top flight. But at Liverpool, he's going to be expected to do a lot more. Liverpool are still the best performing team in top flight history in the country. So for them, to be outside the top four is failure. But with the players he's got, is he actually going to be able to do that? Is that a fair expectation? Another unfortunate blow for Swansea, as well as losing their, their manager in Brendan Rodgers, is they've just agreed to sign the Icelandic Sigurdsson, who's been on loan at Swansea and had a great season for them for 6.8 million. However, apparently one of the things that that deal is depending on is that he gets the work of Brendan Rodgers. And obviously if Brendan Rodgers leaves, Sigurdsson might not think that Swansea is as attractive an option. Maybe he'll end up going to Liverpool. Interesting. I think what will have a large impact on Brendan Rodgers' success at Liverpool will be one, how he reacts to the, the old guard of Liverpool, how he gets on with Carragher and Gerrard. It's very important he gets them on board. Also, it'll be great to see what he does with the signings who Dalglish made that weren't deemed to be too successful. Stuart Downing, Jordan Henderson, Andy Carroll and Charlie Adam. A lot of money's been spent on these guys and they don't really seem to have uh, paid that money back yet in performances. 
So, we know that Rodgers is one of the least experienced managers on the list Liverpool had. Perhaps that could work in his favour. And if he does well, he could have a long career there. He's only 39 years old. I think Liverpool need to give him a little bit of time to get used to it, to get used to being a bigger club, and hopefully he can do well. That's it for now. Let me know what you think about the appointment of Brendan Rodgers in the comments below. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks. It's time.